everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. This episode what we're going to do is we're going to look at redstone automation to fix what could be described a bug in the last episode. In the last episode what I did was to connect everything up with redstone from the big machines um, so I could output uh, seeds and apples when the uh, the hoppers were at well in the, when those machines hadn't didn't have enough and basically when they became empty But that's actually not quite good enough. What we need to do is do it slightly differently What we need to do is we need to sort of Start filling it up when it gets below a certain level and stop when it gets above. That's a standard thing we Normally use it for energy, but in this case we're going to do it with items And we're going to use redstone automation for that. So let's start with that now. Well, I've moved the redstone automation stuff to in here so and here it is. So let's have a look. There is one of the samples that um, was provided. Is an, a sample of an RS um, no latch. So let's have a look. I think it's called RS dash latch. I'm not sure whether it has to be case sensitive or not. I suspect in Windows it doesn't have to be. Let's see if that works. No, it. Oh, RE RS try RS not RE. Let's load that schematic from a file. Shift click it, good. So what this does is it basically takes two inputs like that and then uses these circuits which are uh, it's these ones basically null gates to produce an RS latch effect. Now we're going to use something similar to that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all of this and start again. So I'm just going to empty, load up the empty one and hopefully I can remember how to do this. <laughs> Not always that easy. Because when you actually have loaded up one and you move bits around, you end up with these constants. So it becomes a little bit more difficult to edit this files. So let's load up this one and start afresh. So what we need is one input like that. Like that. We press it at the top, it doesn't matter where we place it really. And then we need two constants. We're gonna have two outputs. So let's put out two outputs as well. So we need two constants. Let's create these. Like that. So what I'm going to do is a redstone value of four or less than four will basically be around about 20%. So let's start with this. I want to round that with about 20%. I'm not going to put percent in because we can calculate easily enough and it saves components. So let's have a look at the value of four here. And then on the bottom one, when it gets above 80%, we're going to stop. And that's a value of about 12. It's only approximate. It doesn't really matter that much because it's, it's not that important. So what we're going to say is when this input here is less than four, we want to turn on the thing. So we need to say, we need as an arithmetic operator in here that says less than, or logic operator, I suppose. So when it's less than this here, less, it's not less than, just less. And the other one's greater than or equal to, which is this one. So when it's greater than or equal to, we turn it off. And when it's less than, we turn it on. So what we have to do is just simply link these up now. So what we want is then we want these two NOR gates that we have, that we saw before, so we can actually latch the two things together. So let's create two of those like that. Now both of those only want two inputs. So right click this twice to get two inputs like that. Um, and the output of these always goes to the input of, the, of its previous one. So for example, if I want this one here, let's just mouse wheel up to get the second input and we connect that input by right clicking to this one here so that gets the output of that gets connected to this one and we do the same for this one as well so right click this one like that and you can see these are how they get set up so that's that's the rs latch bit of it so what we want is this input here so we want to say if this input is less than this one so we, let, we select this one here and then we right click this so that, and then we select the con we select this one and move it down, right, mouse wheel down, and select this one. And we do the same thing here as well. So we say, so it's going to be greater than 12. So basically we're turning it off. So we right click this one, like that. Move to the next one, like this. Uh, no, actually I want the input. I want the input on this one. So let's right click the input there. Because so, you can have them both, of course. And then scroll down here and then right click this one. So that's how we want it. Now these two are then are the inputs to these RS null latches. So let's select this one, move it up to the top one and right click that. And it's the same thing here as well. So, so that basically becomes the latches. And these then go to the outputs. So let's have this let's say if this one goes to this output here, 
uh, and I have to select the app first and then right click this one don't I and the same one with this one like that and that's the circuit that's actually done now just to make life a bit easier we can say this one we could just give them names so we say this is for example A and this one here is B now that's it so that, that should work and we can actually sort of test this I've got a test system set up ready for this so we'll have a look at that next so I'm going to save this scheme here like that just, just save it to the to the circuit here just click it. It doesn't really give you any feedback with it saved, but it is done. Because then you can look at this, and we haven't given it a name because it's blank. And so we give it a name. So let's call this one um, Minmax. Okay, let me save it like that. And then it tells you on the circuit it's called Minmax, just above the shifter info. So then we can come out of here, and I've got some blocks over here. I think this is where I'm keeping everything, but I've already done some of this. I've already built it to test it. And hopefully I've got this circuit right. I'll just check it in a second. We'll just load up the one I did actually test. <laughs> Make sure I got it right. Here. So I'm going to remove this block here. And we'll use this one as a as the circuit that we've got in here. Let's put this into the assembler like this. And you see it's done straight away. So it's called, it's actually called between. So that didn't actually, and this is a high speed casing. That's interesting. That should be not between. <laughs> that should be the other one. Let's go back to this one. Make sure that that one says now between. Okay. I think they're identical. Let's just check it, shall we? So um, let's save this one to a file. Shift left click it here on that one. So it's saved to a file, min max. And then let's load up between because that's the other one that I set up last yesterday to test it all out. So, oh yes, it just changed a little bit, not very much. But everything else was the same. So I think these can. I think these wires just looked as though they changed, and you got these outputs A and B, and you got an input here A. It doesn't matter very much. So let's go and take that the assembler here and make sure that this is actually configured correctly which it is now we just go and put this down it's actually winter time and i have forgotten my um uh thermal what's it called my little device for keeping me warm <laughs> but i'm all right because i'm in range of this one here so i'm going to put this down here like that and then we're going to have to set it up so we right click this one now and you can see these are the inputs here. So the, the input is obviously on the left hand side here, which in fact, I'm not sure which direction is. Let's look at the minimap west, I think. That direction, yes, indeed it is. So the output is going to be on the east side for one and on the front side for the other, so which will be south. I guess. Yes, it will be south. So let's one set this one to east. And let's set this one to south. Let's turn it on. So at the moment you see it's got a it's got a value here of three. This is, tells you this. And if you look over here, we've got a value of three. So that's less than some strange colours, is it? Because it's night time. Probably because it's night time. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll have a quick sleep and come back in a few seconds. Right, as you can see, it's turned on this one. So if we now push this value here up above twelve. So we simply right hold the mouse button down. You can actually select 12. So if you know where it is, so that'll be 10, for example. And it tells me power of 10, uh, power of 11, power of 12. Now, when it does that, this should turn over. So let's just do it from this side so you can see the things moving across here like that. So it's greater than or equal to, and it should switch over sides like that. And as you can see, it has done. So let's change the speed to actually being max. So it works almost immediately. I don't need this device on the uh, in production because in production we're, it's slow anyway and it's also it takes time for the items to come out and go around so that's now changed so now this will carry in we can push it right up to the top like that and it stays on the side we can bring it right down and it should stay on until it gets to 
three so that's this four and that's four so it should stay on in this one and next time down it goes off and switches on this one which will be the output side and you can actually see this in here you see this one here says it's off eight is FFF and that one is related to this one here at the bottom um, and you can see it goes yellow when you move your mouse onto this one here so signal strength of that there's also the colors on uh, the designer were actually representing arithmetic or logic processes I did figure that out eventually so let's push this back up now to to 12 you see it stays on and if you look at this again this this value here is now 8 so this will be a power of 8 and it's very simple isn't it it's not so complicated I thought it was just dreadfully complicated when I first started so that's it the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the nether and we'll set that up on the other side well, as you can see, there's been a lot of pollution from the generator as I was running it for untesting purposes. But um, I've also need to run, make some more redstone wire because I left the other bit in the other base. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make some of these. I've got connectors. That's fine. I'll put this redstone in this chest anyway so I don't walk around with it all the time. I was using some redstone to indicate uh, what's been going on. Now, unfortunately, I've... I'm having a bug. I've actually got two bugs. I can't open this chest without the game, the engineer's toolbox without the game crashing. But the one that's actually affecting me most is this one here. If I right click this, I want to put attach a wire to it. It says, can I attach a wire here? Well, obviously you can. It's a wire. It's a redstone wire connector, so you should be able to connect a wire to it. Uh, what you have to do to fix that is either break that connector or remove the wires from it and then do it again. But that means you've then got to attach a wire to all of these and each one of these is going to be broken i'm pretty sure of it I'm not, i haven't tested them all yet so you cannot attach wire here so you've basically got to go around the whole system and do it it's an it's a right pain i said that a few times in the last episode but it really is a it's a right yeah it's a real bummer so that we can't do that and there's always also a problem with the generator now the generator i've got connected it up like this last time didn't i well let's just see if i've got something i can actually use i've got some yes i've got some coke dust here let's see if we can make some steel i've got some iron here no problem so we're going to shift put this into here we should be able to make some steel so now what's happening i sh maybe it's working now i'm not 100 percent sure last time i did this i clicked it off oh that's working fine good it didn't work and asked me why i just don't get it anyway i'll leave that running because one of the interesting effects we might see is that it's actually producing so much pollution that we should get mining fatigue. So while that's running, let's get on with this. What I've done is I've put those two boxes at that circuit we designed here. But to be absolutely sure that it's working correctly, I added uh, a redstone connector to here like this uh, on this channel here. And this one is just, it doesn't matter what colour I'm using here because that's actually an output so it's outputting here so it says it's got a power of 13 seems to be good so it's not completely full as you can see uh, and it's got a reasonable power what I'm going to do is move my stuff out of the way here like this um, I'm not sure where I'm going to put it like that, and remove some of this items out of here so we can see it going down again so this one's on attached to this one on here i've done the same thing from the other side of it so as you see this is on now on means that that purple one over the magenta one over there is turned off and i did rewire it a bit i also brought the uh the industrial hemp fiber at the top here as well so that's fine oh, look at that was, you don't see that from the from the bottom of the electrodes are working away so anyway, that's so now attached like that. So you can see which one's connected to where. They should all be magenta in this case. It doesn't matter about this one because it's just a, an output for this one here. But obviously, this needs to be magenta so to connect to this one. Uh, on, on the outside of this one, it can be any colour you like. In fact, it does tell you here it's white. Now, there is a slight problem. If I change this channel here by right-clicking it from any other colour, that power will disappear. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. This one has got is set to orange. If I right click this, it's not connected to anything at the moment. Light blue. You'll see that the power isn't showing any power at all. So let's go to white. So that's after red and black. No, it's got no power in here because this one doesn't seem to have 
it doesn't seem to work but if I do that on the other ones it will show me a power ah, little feature maybe it doesn't matter that much because you can connect it like this so that has to be the same color as this one here and this has to be set to output and then you can see it so now let's remove some of this it should be going down as because it should be being used up so what we're going to do is remove most of this stuff let's take it down to about three stacks now it's 36 per or it's around about 36 per per point so to speak so this is now telling me uh, it's got a power of six so let's now remove this to down to three so basically taking half of this stuff out of here like that that should bring it down to around about three which it is so that should be turned on so this goes off and then out come the seeds and they're dropping out as you can see so we didn't get the pollution i was expecting to get in here it only does it when i'm trying not to demonstrate i've got my armor on i guess so it's holding things back a bit and as you can see they're going around they're actually getting fed into this side of the hopper which you can't see i did move stuff about uh i moved well actually what i did is i reflected the fermenter over here so that the apples could go on the same side the reason for that there isn't enough space to put the uh, circuit advanced automated redstone block here on the other side so as you can see this is filling up nicely so let's go now and put in fill it up fill it back up with this and then it should stop what time what what's it got 12. so it then turns it off as you see it's gone on here and then the items stop coming out so that's how i want it to behave a bit complicated what i found difficult was these wires not connecting up that was a that was a real pain and also just making sure you're getting the right input and output on these things obviously that's an input because this is the block that's emitting the redstone signal and this is now because we want to see what level it is at and this one's only got two states so it's zero or 15 and this one's got indicates what the thing uh, the power of the thing is i've done exactly the same on the other side here let's go over here so it's and this particular one is also white here and it's coming out here and on the top it was already set to white like this so it's an output white and this is an input white as you can see and then they're getting fed all the way around and then we should be able to see those room reflected on the um circuit so that's what we'll do is we'll just do that again let's get some stuff out of here so it goes down like that and then it should start to feed the stuff and we should also see this change here so you see that this one is a squeezer it has got zero it's either zero or f now because that's the, that's what we're measuring in the system so it's basically what off or on i can put this back oh, see, i'm picking it up i'm picking it up because the items are going in here like that we can wait or we can just speed it up a bit uh put in if i get it up to about power 11 and it should automatically stop let's have a look at that i think that might be enough let's have a look now it's, they're still getting fed out as you can see and when that changes this will go off so let's have a look it shouldn't be too long to do that so I'll just wait a few seconds and hopefully it'll do it then we can see in action from the control panel there we go it's just changed as you saw it now so that's that one and you should see the items being no longer fed out of there which may, which means that this is actually still taking items of course because it takes a while for the for the seeds to go around the conveyor belts but it means it's not desperately full see it's not completely full let's just fill it up and let's come over here and then uh, get rid of these seeds in here I can just about reach this in fact like that and as you see the other seeds are coming from the farm so the next thing is is to move these pipes there's a configuration file you see these two vents here are coming out of the, the boiler they're out of the diesel generator going out so we did cover this last time it's night time i'm going to go and go to sleep and come back in a few seconds because we need to see it in daylight as you can see up there there's an enormous amount of pollution but there's a configuration uh, in the forge and the tech configuration file that allows me to increase the maximum length of the vents so instead of having a length of 
16 which it is at the moment we can change that to what we'd like so I've changed it to 128 and I, that should be able to bring me across into the farms here and I should be able to use this chimney and when I can use this chimney then the pollution is going to come over here and make the crops go like crazy so that's it for this episode I hope you've enjoyed it it's quite a challenge to get all this up and running I'm having a lot of fun doing it so until next time I wish you all the best bye for now